5G radio waves in simple terms. In this video, we will introduce several topics related to the radio waves used for transmitting data in 5G mobile communication systems. We will start by the allocated spectral bands. Then we will delve into the physical mechanisms that facilitate the propagation of radio waves, starting by the simplest case where no obstacles are interposed between the transmitter and the receiver. Furthermore, we will explain how the waves may be reflected by walls and other surfaces. We will also discuss how they can penetrate through obstacles. Finally, we will introduce simple, practical models allowing to calculate the path loss. The radio spectrum. Spectrum allocation is the domain of government agencies, for example, the Federal Communications Commission in the USA, Ofcom in the United Kingdom, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications from Japan, the Frequencies National Agency, ANFR, in France, the State Radio Regulation Bureau from China. At the international level, the United Nations holds a specialized agency called International Telecommunications Union, ITU. One of its branches, called ITUR, focuses on radio matters. It develops recommendations that are suggested to national bodies as guides for spectrum regulation purposes. ITUR meets each four years in the so-called World Radio Communication Conferences. The last one took place in 2015. It raised a set of questions regarding 5G spectrum. The next one is planned for 2019. A main concern in the design of communication systems is how to ensure that the different components are able to understand their respective messages. In other words, to ensure that all components interoperate properly. Since 1998, the third generation partnership project 3GPP has developed the detailed requirements that all pieces of equipment and software must comply with in order to ensure that they work smoothly together. 3GPP provided the specifications for 3G UMTS and for 4G LTE systems. Since 2016, it works on the development of 5G. 3GPP 5G bands are arranged in two groups. The first one covers the range between 450 MHz and 6 GHz. It is the domain of the centimeter waves. The second one covers the interval between 24 and 53 GHz, called the millimeter block. Some of the centimeter bands are in use for mobile communication since a long time ago. For example, band 1 is being used in Europe for 3G. Band 7 and 20 are used in 4G. These bands will probably be refunded for 5G sometime in the future. On the other hand, millimeter bands have not been used for cellular communications up to now. Due to their high frequencies, they behave differently than the centimeter ones. We will talk on these specificities in a few minutes. Free space propagation. As a starting point, let's consider radio waves propagation when there are no obstacles interposed between the transmitter and the receiver and no reflections or diffraction effects take place. The signal produced by the radio amplifier at the transmitter is attenuated by the transmission cables, connectors and other accessories feeding the antenna 
which provides additional gain. Radio waves flow from transmitter to receiver. The signal captured by the receiver antenna is attenuated by its conduction line. The resulting signal feeds the receiver front end. Let's call GT and GR the gains of the transmitter and receiver antennas. L the transmission losses in the antenna lines. Lambda the wavelength of the transmitted signal and D the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. Let PT be the transmitted power in watts and PR the received power. The ratio between PR and PT may be computed by the so-called freeze equation. Lumping some terms we arrive at a compact expression. As may be seen, the power loss increases as the square of the distance over wavelength ratio. We focus our attention on a 5G radio wave in the centimeter spectrum region, for example in the 2100 MHz band. What will be the power loss if both antennas have unity gain and the distance between transmitter and receiver is 100 meters? The wavelength is 14 centimeters. Applying freeze equation, we may find the power loss. It amounts to 79 dBs. As a second example, consider the 5G millimeter wavelength spectrum region allocated in the United States by the Federal Communications Commission. It includes bands in 28, 37, 39 and 60 gigahertz. What will be the power loss if both antennas have unity gain and the distance between transmitter and receiver is 100 meters? Take, for example, waves transmitted at 28 GHz. The corresponding wavelength is 11 mm. Applying freeze equation, we find that it is 101 dB. In this table, the rows show the attenuation at distances from the base between 1 m and 1 km. Columns 2 and 3 correspond to typical frequencies currently used in 3G and 4G cellular networks. The remaining columns refer to frequencies allocated by the FCC for 5G or for license-free wireless local area networks. Although the radius of current typical cells in urban environment is around 500 meters, we expect 5G millimeter cells to be smaller probably in the range of 100 meters. At this distance from the base, the attenuation at 28 GHz will be 23 dB higher than at 2 GHz. When we will discuss antennas for millimeter waves, we will see that it is feasible to compensate this excess attenuation with suitable antenna gains. Millimeter waves, reflection and penetration. We know from daily experience that radio waves are able, at some extent, to penetrate through walls and other obstacles interposed on the way. Inevitably, a part of the energy from the incoming wave is reflected or consumed as heat in the obstacle. We say that there is an excess loss over free space attenuation. This table shows that the excess loss increases significantly with frequency. Bands on the order of 900 MHz are currently used in 2G, 3G and 4G, while millimeter bands near 29 GHz will also be used in 5G. Therefore, we should expect as much as 22 additional dB's penetration attenuation under those conditions, certainly a major difference. Penetration losses not only depend on carrier frequency. The type of material strongly influences the level of these losses as well.
at 29 gigahertz for example the penetration loss due to clear glass and drywall to typical indoor materials are relatively modest on the order of 5 dBs. But for tinted glass as used in the windows of most office buildings it climbs to around 40 dBs. Besides some materials behave at some extent like mirrors. Part of the wave energy bounces back leading to a reflection effect. In millimeter waves the relative strength of this reflected energy is high. For example, around 90% of the energy from 28 GHz waves is reflected by tinted glass. The different behavior between centimeter and millimeter waves leads to advantages and inconveniences for 5G. On one hand, attenuation largely increases at 29 GHz and beyond, reducing the coverage of 5G base stations. Therefore, additional cells will be required to cover a given area. On the other hand, strong attenuation from tinted glass as used in outdoor walls reduces interference between indoor and outdoor cells, facilitating frequency reuse. As spectrum is a scarce and expensive natural resource, Increased efficiency is welcomed by carriers and regulatory agencies. Moreover, building walls and tinted glass windows are good reflectors at millimeter waves. Therefore, the user equipment might be able to receive signals from these secondary sources, even if direct sight to the base is obstructed. Path loss Let's recall the freeze equation from our previous discussion on free space propagation. If we set aside the terms related to antenna gains and cable losses, a factor including the dependency on base to mobile distance and wavelength is left. We call it path loss. Path loss may be expressed in decibels. It includes a term alpha that only depends on the selected wavelength and another one beta that exclusively depends on the base to mobile distance. Therefore the resulting linear equation includes just two parameters the intercept alpha and the slope beta. In real situations the free space model does not reflect the propagation mechanisms with sufficient accuracy. There are several reasons for this limitation. A direct line of sight wave reaches the receiver, but one or more reflections reach it as well. The line of sight wave is blocked by an obstacle, but the receiver is able to get sufficient energy from one or more reflected waves. The path loss equation previously discussed remains a good rough approximation in these situations but different values of the intercept and slope must be used as shown in the table and graph. Conclusions In summary, ITUR and 3GPP recommend 5G radio bands in the centimeter and millimeter domains. 5G radio waves are subject to stronger attenuation than their 3G and 4G counterparts. They are efficiently reflected by tinted glass, concrete and other modern building materials. Therefore, reflection becomes a significant propagation mechanism in the outdoors environment. A simple model can be used as a first approximation to predict the expected path losses in direct or obstructed visibility. Excess attenuation is a major challenge due to its economic impact on the radio network infrastructure costs, but emerging technologies like beamforming are expected to mitigate this issue. In a future video, we will show how beamforming works.